fine. So welcome to uh, the World Card Making Day event. My name is Kimberly Morris. Um, my blog is at procrastistamper.blogspot.com. Um, and uh, when we get to the end here, um, I'll put this back up here. But if you want to shop, my store is Kimberly. It's K-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-Y dot stampin' up dot net. And my host code uh, for this event is actually the same host code that I have for the month. And it's J-G-R, C as in cat, N as in Nancy, G, nine, Z or Z, I guess if you're Canadian. Um, but I'm in the United States. I'm in Colorado Springs. I'm going to set this stuff aside for now. And this is the card that we're going to be making. So um, I want to, when the catalog came out, the mini catalog, I had to get the animal stamp set first because I love cats. So everybody was like, oh, I know which stamp set Kimberly's getting. Yes, you are correct. I got this one first. Um, it does come with a set of dies to cut out all the different animal shapes, but I didn't use that on this card. Um, I used actually a different die set, which is um, these alphabet dies. And then for the words, I used the Tag Buffet photopolymer stamp set. I'll set those aside. I'm gonna show you um, how I split out the words in a minute. Um, looks like I got a little bit of red. My red ink, I don't know if you guys have this issue, but um, I still have one of the old ink pads and the real red, whenever I stamp, it just takes a while to um, dry totally before it uh, decides it's not gonna smear anymore. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is um, take this little piece, this is shimmery white cardstock, and this is about four and seven eighths inches by I believe it's three and three quarters inches. Um, and we'll have a PDF with the instructions for all of these uh, cards that we made during the presentation that we'll be sending out at the end and they'll have all the measurements and stuff. So don't stress about, about that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create the little, I guess you can call them windows. They're not really squares, they're little rectangles. I created these using the B clear block and I'm using Coastal Cabana ink. Let me see if I can it says, of course you're building a cat. Yes, I'm building a cat. So let me move this over here because it looks like I can't, I don't necessarily have all my screens showing here. So this is the B block. Uh, I'm using Coastal Cabana. This is one of our older ink pads, um, but it's the foam. And I tried a few different things to figure out how to get kind of the level of ink that I wanted. And what I landed on was using a, a Stampin' Sponge to get the ink off of the ink pad and to kind of dab it on here. Um, and that makes it nice and light in the middle. And then, oops, I got a string on there. Um, let me pull that up. Yikes. Um, and then I take the block and I'm just gonna kind of roll the edges, right? So I'll roll the edges, just so it's a little bit darker around there, if you can see that. And then I'm gonna stamp it off. So I'm just gonna press down and stamp that once. I'll set that over there. Now, when I space these, this is kind of my prototype, so the spacing is a little bit wonky, but um, I like to do the one, um, you know, on one side first and then the other side and then just plop the one in the middle. So I eyeball things. Um, if you wanna use like the grid paper and just like, oh, I wanna make this, you know, like a half an inch down or whatever, um, you're welcome to do that. I'm just lazy. So I'm gonna do that. And then before you go and um, ink it up again, if you just take the sponge and start applying ink, then it's still gonna be darker around the edges. So I just kind of wipe it off and then I'll tap again. You can't even see it on there. So <laughs> good luck keeping, keeping your fingers from getting all like totally uh, inky with this, but whatever, that's part of card making, right? So I'll sponge that. And again, I'm just going to roll the edges around so that you can see. It's got a little darker bit around the edges. I'll stamp it off again one time. And then you can breathe on it if you wanna make it a little darker. And then I will guesstimate again, like where I am on the other side. Press that sucker down and then you got another window. Um, I'll go ahead and do that one more time. And then we'll just try and hope that I kind of get it in the middle on the end. And this is the, the Stampin' Sponges, you get three of them in a pack, and then I cut them in four pieces. So, 
and they're also washable. You can just take them and wash them, wash them out with soap. So, I mean, you get a package or two of those and you're good for a lifetime of crafting, I think. So, and these are probably closer together than they needed to be, but, oh, that's so ugly. We're gonna pretend we didn't do that. All right, let me try and do this again really quick. This is why you wanna see me on live because you wanna see how badly I mess up, right? All right, so I'm doing a fast pretend that I'm doing it with the sponge and we'll see if I can do this better. It's hard also when you have the camera kind of in your way, but I like how it gets lighter with the sponge, but I'm just kind of wiping it on my uh, work surface. All right, let's see if I can do this a little bit better. I'm gonna put this down towards me. Okay, that's a little bit better. <laughs> so when you have the stress of a camera, it's not quite so easy. All right, and then what I did was I stamped the little face um, of the kitty in there. Um, if you want to, uh, what I like to do on the shimmery white cardstock, uh, when you have that much ink sitting on there, um, if you take a paper towel and you can just put it on there and just sort of absorb anything that's going to be extra and kind of in your way and causing a problem later. So we'll do that. There's just a little bit of extra there. All right, so I just inked up my stays on ink pad. Um, I colored this in with Stampin' Blends and technically I believe you're supposed to use the Memento ink pad, but I used the stays on with this and didn't really have a problem. So your mileage may vary, but this is what I did. So I'll stamp the little kitty faces. And you wanna make sure that, like I said, that your stays on ink pad has been inked up fairly recently. Um, it, it likes to, this ink is like, um, I don't know, it's like sticky almost. So you don't wanna like jam the stamp down, but you wanna press it down firmly so that it makes contact because stays on is meant to dry quickly. It dries on non-porous surfaces. Um, but you you don't want to you know mash it down there so that it sticks and then we have the ears so i'll put the ears on da -da -da. okay so he's got his little ears and then i like this little face for the kitty face, but it doesn't have any whiskers on it. So I'll show you what I did to get those in just a second. Woo kaka. Now you can see through these, but it can be hard sometimes to line them up just perfectly. Let me see if I can get this to go a little bit better. Almost. But if you have like the um, the black marker, the stamp and write black marker, then you can go over that when you're done. And you can see I'm kind of smearing. I'm trying to go fast here. Okay, so there's his little face. Um, the stamp set had um, a different little face, like, like kind of like a bunny nose, like almost a sticking out bunny nose with the whiskers. And I didn't want the sticking out, you know, bunny nose on the face, but I wanted the whiskers. So I don't know how well you can see this, but let me move this out of the way and I'll show you what I did. Um, I took the stamp. And you can see it on, you know, the little, uh, what do you call this? The little plastic piece that goes in the case. And I actually cut the whiskers apart from there. I just used my uh, paper snips and cut those uh, whiskers. Let me see if I have some white. So I just cut the whiskers away from that stamp. Um, and then I was able to take the pieces and I actually kind of set them down on my card and lined them up and then took my block and just put it like right down on top. Um, so I would get the spacing just the way that I wanted it. So I'll go ahead and drop those little whiskers in now. Sounds like a little kiss. Okay, so we got our whiskers and our little kitty faces done. Um, what I did after that was uh, color it in 
but um, I want, because I just inked up my stays on ink pad, I want to um, do a little bit of this work down here um, for a second. And that way that'll give that a little bit more time to dry. So with the Mary Catmus, I used the Tag Buffet stamp set. This is the one that coordinates with the Tag Buffet project kit. And I just really love the script on it. Um, I would have bought it just for like the Merry Christmas and the Tis the Season because it's just, I really love it. Um, but I took the Merry Christmas stamp and I did a similar thing that I did with um, the other ones. So let's see if you can see. So it says Merry Christmas and you can see I cut um, the MAS off of the end and then I cut the Merry away from the Christmas. Now, when you use, when you cut them apart, um, if you decide you wanna use them all together as one, all you have to do is, you know, just snug them up to each other on the block and it's like, they're not even cut. So it's not a big deal. So here we go with my real red ink pad that likes to get ink everywhere. Again, it's one of the older ones. Probably if I replaced it, maybe the ink wouldn't do that as badly. I can hope, right? So these are the foam pads you want to, uh, our full size pads are all foam pads. You just wanna just be really gentle with these um, and not mash them in there. Especially if you already have stamping on your card, um, you wanna make sure that you don't have ink around the edges. If you do, then just keep that paper towel that you have, um, you know, for wiping off and just wipe the extra ink off before you stamp it down. And we'll put this right about here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I just went ahead and put the MAS on the other side of the block. So let me clean that so I don't get red ink on me. And I'm just using my Simply Chamois to clean that off. And then the MAS is just down in the corner there. I'll ink that up with the real red. And I'm just gonna put that over here-ish. Okay. And same thing, like I said, with my real red. Uh, ink pad. You can use the paper towel to soak up some of the ink or you can just put your card upside down on your grid paper. Find a place that there's not already ink or sticky stuff obviously and just press it down. Some people like to, um, like I just use my whole pad of grid paper here. So if you wanted to just lift up, you know, your piece of grid paper and um, do it that way, then that works too. Okay, so now I have the coloring in to do. Um, I used to color this little kitty. I used, and I'm not really watching your comments, so I'm sorry if um, I will try to go back through there. It's so little, um, it's hard for me to see them and they can go by kind of fast. Um, so I'm using the Smoky Slate uh, Dark and Light, and I'm using the Flirty Flamingo Dark and Light just for the little pink parts. So I like to go in. And I kind of do it, um, I don't know, maybe like, I don't know, like repetitively, I guess you might say. So I like to go in and just go on the dark parts. Um, it doesn't seem to have much of an effect with this uh, coastal cabana under here. So I just haven't really worried about it. I just color right over it. So I like to go in with the dark first and you know make those outlines and I like the Stampin' Blends um, because the way they blend you like you can scribble and it just totally doesn't even matter so like for Christmas cards you might be like hmm I don't want a Christmas card that I have to color in right I don't want to be doing all that coloring and I am not a coloring person at all but um, this just goes really super fast you don't have to be especially artistic about it so I'll just put some dark spots there and then I go back with the light one and some people like to use the brush end I like to use the little round end the brush end sometimes I feel like kind of just gives off too much ink maybe if that makes sense so and you can see this is going to smear a little bit because like I said I just inked up my stays on ink pad if you use the um, memento you probably would not have this problem and also um, if you stamp these and let them dry or you use your heat gun. Um, our heat gun is really nice because it has a couple of different settings on it. It's got one that's like kind of not so hot so you can just dry your ink with it and it doesn't, it's not gonna so much like warp the cardstock. Um, it just doesn't get quite that hot. 
So we'll color this in some. And then you can go back over it. If you decide that you don't like, um, you know, kind of how dark it is in some spots, we have also have the color corrector in the Stampin' Blends. And so you can go and you can like pull out some of the color. It'll just kind of lighten it up a little bit. You can't, what it kind of actually does is sort of pushes the color away. It doesn't necessarily like actually lighten it, but um, it can give you some spaces where it looks a little lighter. So, and then I go back again with the dark. Once I've done the dark and the light, I go back again with the dark. And if I want it really dark, I'll use the brush. And like I said, that puts a lot down. Um, but I kind of like to use the, the little bullet end. Some people find this soothing. I don't know that I would say it's soothing to color in, but it's kind of fun. Oh, and look, see, I told you I make a mess over everything. Um, I was going to say, you might want to put a paper towel over that if you en encounter that problem or just do that stamping last. I just love to make a right mess out of everything. So we'll just scribble some more. And it doesn't, like I said, it's just, you don't even have to like make it look like it's supposed to be something. You just scribble and it's like, oh, it looks like you tried, looks like you making it, made an effort there. Hmm. So there we go. And then I'm gonna go in here with the, this is the dark, dark flirty flamingo. Just little nose. He's a cute little pink nose. And then you can do his ears. That's probably more pink than I had on the other one, but that's kind of cute. So we'll see. But if, even if you didn't like take the color corrector, it just really, um, when you're using the blender pens, it would just kind of push that color away. So it sort of pushes the gray color away. So you still can kind of see the gray underneath it, but um, it's not as, uh, pink as it is when you use the color corrector. So totally up to you, whatever you like to do. Um, and again, if you wanna use like a Sharpie marker or your basic black um, marker to touch up, um, I definitely always, this is why I like the, um, the Stampin' Write markers because you can get them in all the colors. So if I stamp something and it like doesn't quite come out the way I want, then I have the marker that can, um, I can go in and just kind of uh, sometimes instead of just drawing a line or especially using the brush tip, if you go in and take, like you can see on this sample, where there's just little places where it just didn't quite, let me just see if I can clean off my hand so I don't get red. Um, if you see this open space, I like to just kind of dot. Because sometimes if you just take and draw a line, then it's really evident that, you know, you did that to touch it up. But if you just kind of tap little dots in there, then you can fill up that area and it doesn't quite look so much like you came in after and drew a line in there. So that's my my tip with the regular stamp and write markers. I really love those things. But you wanna make sure that you've done all of your uh, stamp and blend coloring first before you go back in with this marker, otherwise you will smear this marker. So that's just the regular stamp and write, basic black. Okay, so back to our slightly messed up card. Sometimes I have found that if I, um, I have a white eraser. I probably can't find it from the life of me right now. But if you have one of those like white erasers, sometimes that will erase off um, some of the ink that, you know, if you just smear it. So um, I wish I had that here so I could show you it actually really works kind of well. All right. So the last little thing that I did was um, for the words was I used the dies and let me go grab them and I'll show you. So these are the, if I can remember what they're called, playful alphabet dies. So this is in the, I believe it's called the playing with patterns or playful patterns suite. Um, and you get all these letters and um, I pulled the C-A-T out of here. And you can see there's um, like an extra, I think there's an extra E, there's an extra A. So you get some extra ones so that you can run them through your uh, stamp and cut and emboss machine uh, just once and um, get most of the letters that you need. Uh, so these are the ones, if you just ran them through 
using the Playing with Patterns designer series paper. This is a six by six paper. Um, so you can just get the little flat ones and you could adhere them um, just fine with that. Um, if probably you'd wanna use maybe your uh, fine tip glue pen. Let me move this stuff out of the way. I wasn't really gonna cut these out, but I think I forgot to cut an extra set. Um, what I did was I adhered some of our uh, new foam adhesive sheets. And so what you do is you take a strip of these sheets. Let me show you, cause they're, they're not huge, they're kind of small. So these are the foam adhesive sheets. And I don't know if it has the measurements four by nine, four and nine sixteenths by four and three eighths. So they're just little squares of like double-sided adhesive. So what you do is you just kind of cut a strip about the size that you probably are gonna need. You peel off one layer and you stick that to the back of the paper that you're gonna cut out. And then let me set Kitty over here for a second and I'll just bring my machine in and show you because it goes really fast. And it's really actually quite smooth. So I've already put the adhesive on the back of that. Um, you're not going to be able to see this too much with the way I have my camera set up. But all I did was I set the, I like to start over here on this side. Um, I used the correct sandwich just for the, um, the little thin dies. So I've got the plate number one, and then I've got the plate number two, which is like a little tiny thin spacer plate, and then uh, both of the number three plates. And in between the th number three plates is where I'm gonna put this. And even though it has this thickness of the, um, the little foam adhesive, it still goes right through. It kind of sounds like popcorn crunch, but it goes through just fine. So I'll set the letters there. I don't know if you can see that, it's slightly off the screen, but I'm just setting them right on there. They can be like right next to each other. It doesn't even really matter. I put the last one on top and then I don't know how much this is gonna shake my camera, but you can see it comes out like all squished. But then when you take this off, um, this guys just like pop right out and the little dies just pop right off of it. So it's really super simple. Um, you could just, you know, run these through really quickly. It's not like one of those things where it's like, oh, no, no, I have to get my little brush out. And, you know, it's going to take five minutes each time I run this through so that I can get them um, to come apart. Uh, I had that problem with our old die cutting machine with a lot of them. But with the Stampin' Cut and Emboss, it's really good at like being just the right um, thickness for everything that you run through. So it's just made especially to work with all our stuff and it works great. So if you don't have that, I totally recommend getting that. Okay. All right, so all we have to do now is come in and we can put our um, little letters in. So because we did the peel and stick on the back of it, we'll just pop the center out of this little A. And then um, what I recommend doing is putting the letters kind of at a wonky angle because then people aren't gonna be like, ooh, you didn't line that up very well. I mean, you might think that, but nobody else is gonna worry about it. So I'll just peel and stick. And if when you're stamping the Merry Christmas part, if you kind of have the same spacing before the little curl on the M, um, and the same spacing before that little curl with the S, then it really doesn't matter where you put the, the little cat thing. It's gonna look like it's right. Okay. So there we are, super cute, no kitties. And then what I did to finish this off was I took the, this is the, if I can remember the name correctly. This is in the Playful Pets suite. So this is the Playful Pets. I think they, it's the ribbon trim combo. So it's got this red and white. And then it's also got this black and white, which you could use the black and white as well if you wanted or um, instead, but I didn't. Um, and I took about, I think I did about 18 inches for this uh, ribbon. But if you want a little bit more to work with when you're making your bow, then you can do a little bit more. And um, I have a boo-boo on my finger 
was ugly, so I covered it up. Um, I'll just call it a sports injury. I was playing Pokemon Go. So if you play Pokemon Go, you're like pressing the button over and over and over again. So I can feel like I'm like really athletic and call it a sports injury. Um, but uh, Stephanie has, I don't know if she's mentioned exactly yet, but she has um, one of her prizes is something that will help you make bows. So even if you have a boo-boo, you can make pretty bows. So let me go ahead and get this tied, which you can almost never tie a bow on camera, but we'll see how badly it I mess up. I had a big old band-aid on there and uh, I could not tie a bow. So that's why I put the washi tape on my finger. So, oh well. Okay, and then you can just cut that off. I'm not gonna mess around with that too much. And then the last thing I did was um, you can see this cute little uh, this cute little heart. This actually comes in the Playful Pets trinkets, which is part of that same Playful Pets uh, suite. There's little doggy bones in there. So if you wanted to make a doggy, um, maybe you want to do Mary Dogmas. You know, you could do the same thing, obviously with all the same supplies, just use different letters. Um, then you could use a little bone there, but there's little bones and little hearts. So uh, I took my mini glue dots um, and I want to put this under here um, and I want it to stay but I also you know um, I, I basically want adhesive on the back and adhesive on the front you could tie it but that's a real pain in the behind so um, I just like to put a little kind of wad of this um, glue dot on the front um, before I adhere it so I'm going to go ahead and pull this to expose some more glue dots. And in order to do the little um, glue dot there, I like to take my scissors or you can use your take your pick tool and you kind of roll this glue dot onto itself. And then you can stick it right here at the top, right? So then you've got like that area up there where it's going to go underneath the little knot and sort of hold it in place under the knot, right? And then, um, either before you set it down or after you set it down. I like to do it after because then I've got it, you know, where I have it situated on the knot. Um, then you can take your little glue dot. I just picked it up with my scissors and I'm just gonna kind of flip this up and put the glue dot underneath. It fits pretty much exactly underneath there. So just put that under there and then bring it back down and then it's stuck. And that'll keep your, um, your little bow in place as well. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this extra stuff here. Ooh, that was good. That's why I like to use my, ooh, there goes my tablet. That's why I like to use my um, fabric scissors because it seems like every time I use my paper snips, um, it catches the ribbon. So if you use fabric scissors when you cut your ribbon, then you can get like a really nice clean cut without having it um, frayed and all that business. All right, so all we have to do now is just layer the card. And I'll see if I can pick my tablet back up and see if it's dead forever. Um, this is Coastal Cabana cardstock. It's just the um, regular five and a half by eight and a half uh, when it's folded over. So you take a five and a half or five and a half by four and quarters when you take it when it's folded over. So it's five and a half by eight and a half to start with, and then five and a half by four and a quarter. This layer is five and one eighth. I know these are weird sizes, but um, I just kind of like the way it came out. Uh, five and one eighth by four is that layer. So let me pick up my tablet here real quick. Don't worry about slip onto the floor. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use, you can use the stamp and seal plus or the stamp and seal. I just use whatever I have around, which happens to be the plus. Um, you know, you use as much adhesive as you want. I like it to stay put, so I'm gonna center that there. And when you're folding over a card, when you make the score mark, there's a side on the paper where it's indented, right? And then there's a side of the paper where there's a bump. So, um, I actually did this backwards. What you really wanna do 
um, to get a good fold is like fold it in towards the bump. So you want that tiny bump to be in the middle. Um, but lots of times it just seems counterintuitive to do it this way or to do it that way. And so I end up doing it the wrong way like I just did. And then the last step is just to take some, these are regular size Stampin' Dimensionals, which for a card layer, when you're doing like a whole card layer is totally cool with me. I put one in each corner and then one in the middle because nobody likes saggy bits. So take that, take the little pieces off. Speaking of saggy bits, I was gonna show myself on camera, but I didn't have enough time to get ready. And besides this way, you can't see my chin hairs. <laughs> so one more. And then in case you're forgetful like me, I always like go and touch them all, make sure they're all sticky so that I got the liner off of each one. And that's that. Of course, I made that take a little bit longer than it normally would, but those are your Christmas cards with your kitty cat. And just one more time really quick. Um, you can find my blog at procrastistamper.blogspot.com. And if you want to shop, you can shop at Kimberly. It's K-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-Y dot stampin' up dot net. And this is my host code. Uh, when you shop with that host code, you do get the PDF that I mentioned that Stephanie is um, compiling that has all of the projects that were presented today. And um, all the instructions has got pictures and instructions. So, and then when you shop with me, um, I have special bonuses when you use my house code. So be sure to use that. I think that's about it. Um, I forgot to ask how I'm supposed to end this, but that's all I have. And I think I might just have to press the leave button.